Praise God. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord Father, for, Lord, your presence tonight, Lord, and we come to seek your face tonight. We come to be in your presence, Father. We come to seek in prayer. Lord, we pray, uh, Lord, that your, your anointing now will just sweep over our souls tonight. Lord, all that have come into this into this uh, a gathering tonight, Father, virtually. We pray that your Holy Spirit would bless our hearts, Lord, anoint us and inspire us as we enter into this prayer room, this prayer channel tonight. Lord, we pray that, Lord, wherever this uh, stream will go tonight, Lord, that you, that you would speak to our hearts, Lord, that you would surround us with your presence, Father. Lord, as we reach out to you, Lord, all around the island, Father, and wherever we're hooked up, Lord, Father. Lord, we pray that you, as we reach out to you, your presence would come down and visit your people, Lord. May you bless us by your word, Lord. Anoint you, speaker, this evening. Lord, may the word come forth in such a way that it would be a help to us, Lord, Father. Lord, one word from you, Lord, would make all the difference tonight. So, Father, we put our trust in you, Lord, and we pray that you have your way tonight. Bless the time of prayer. Bless the time of faith as your people reach out and call upon your name. Lord, may you answer, Lord, according to your own, Lord, uh, our blessings tonight. We be careful to give you all your praise, honor, and glory. As we welcome you now, Father, and as we turn over tonight, we pray you come down in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Why don't you give him praise tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you give him glory tonight? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give him praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Glory to God, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you for your throne, O oh God, Father. We thank you for your anointing, O oh God. We thank you for your angels, O oh God, Father, that surround your throne, crying, holy, holy unto the Lord God Almighty. All the earth is filled with his glory. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of hosts. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, let's give him praise tonight. Oh, let us behold him tonight. Oh, hallelujah. He is high and lifted up. His train filled the temple. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Oh, sing hallelujah to the Lord. Oh, sing. Hallelujah. He is the Lord of hosts. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessing and honor, glory and power. Oh, be unto the Lamb forever and ever. Oh, oh, oh sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Oh, oh give him praise tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, it's so good to praise Him. Oh, it's so good to be moved. Oh, hallelujah. By His presence tonight. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Do you love Him tonight? Amen. How many believe we have a friend in Jesus tonight? Amen. Let's sing that song. Oh, what a friend we have in Oh, and all our sins and griefs to bear. Oh, and what a privilege to carry. Oh, everything to God in prayer. in forfeit and oh what needless pain we bear oh all because we do not carry oh every thing to God in prayer Hallelujah. And have we trials and temptations? Oh, and is there trouble anywhere? Oh, tonight, oh, we should never be discouraged. Oh, when we take tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, give 
and praise tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Take it to the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. In prayer tonight. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Peace, peace. Such wonderful peace. Coming down from the Father above. tonight sing in peace peace oh wonderful peace coming down from the Father above sweep over my spirit Blessed be the name of the Lord. Then now let's bow our heads for the prayer. We have a prayer request from Sister Wendy Blades of her granddaughter Amaya, who sprained her foot and is having difficulty walking. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your presence and we thank you for this opportunity that you have given unto us that we can gather together this way in this time. Father, I pray that you would come and anoint each person under the song of our voice. In their homes, we minister to them and meet their every need. We bring Amaya before you with a sprained foot that you would touch her and heal her. And as you approach your word, Lord, may your presence be with us, that you could bring the clarity of the word to your people, make the word plain, make it that their faith could rest solemnly upon what you have promised. God, may it never become boring to them, these precious promises that we have been preaching for years and laying in your word. May it not become ordinary, but it may always be special, Father, that we could see that the God who spoke these promises is obligated to fulfill them. And we are resting on that. Our trust is in thee. Speak to the weak ones, the struggling ones, the ones that have mind battles, the ones who have under oppression, depression, whatever it is, may they be delivered tonight. If they are sick in our midst, may they be healed tonight. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen and amen. God bless you and thanks again for being here tonight. I'm excited uh, for this time of prayer and to share something with you tonight. And this is the prophet speaks. Persecution and trials are a natural, normal part of the Christian life. There's only one thing you can do about them. Commit them all to God. Judge not and leave their outworking and final judgment to him. Thou canst not bear them which are evil. It's only Ephesians to church. And has tried them which say they are apostles and are not. And has found them liars. But this is coming back again, where a lot of guys will be tried to see what they claim is valid. And has found them liars. These words now. These Ephesians believed that God's people ought to be holy. According to this verse, they took steps to keep the body unleavened from sin. Most evidently, the apostasy had already started. Sin had entered into the church, but they were obedient to the words of Paul when he said to put away that wicked from amongst them. Here we go. They were a separated people. They had come out of the world and now they weren't going to let the world enter amongst them. 
they would not put up with sin in the church. Holiness wasn't a phrase with them or a figure of speech. It was a way of life. And to that end, what I got to share with you tonight is two words. Sanctify yourself. Those are the words I have for you tonight. Sanctify yourself. And this here I'm about to read is from John chapter 17, 14 to 21. That's the scriptures. If you have a Bible, you can follow me. I have a few scriptures to read tonight. And you can follow through with me. It's in John chapter 17 from verse 14. Jesus was speaking. I have given them thy word. And the world had hated them. Because they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. But that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them to thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent, also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Let me repeat that verse again. It's verse 19. And for their sakes, this is Jesus speaking, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be in one in us, that the world might believe that thou hast sent me. A scripture we read, I believe it was Wednesday night, Second Corinthians 7, 1. Having therefore these promises, dear be dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all the filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And one more scripture we're going to read, Joshua chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. And Joshua rose early in the morning and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people saying, when ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure, come not near unto it, that ye may know the way which he must go, for you have not passed this way before. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. So this was God's program before they inherit this land. And this is what the prophet says now. Now, when you are asked, you are forgiven of your sins, you only done this, taking that away. But the thing that make you do it is still there. That old root of evil, it is still there. Notice you repent, baptize in the name of Jesus Christ, for he forgive you of your sins. Then secondly, comes sanctification, which, here we go, sets our mind in order for holiness, to think right. Let's pause another bit. Sanctification. Now, don't think for one moment I'm preaching Wesley now in that sense. Or sanctification and we need message and we pass that. No, no, no. No, no, no. This still applies what we're here sharing here right now tonight, right? Now, let's listen closely. Sanctification, which sets our mind in order for holiness to think right. And sanctification is a compound Greek word which means clean and set aside for sins. So that's the word sanctification, clean and set aside for service. Now, let's continue. Now, I've typed it with Joshua. If you notice, Israel was brought out of Egypt and there were three stages of the journey. One stage, leaving Egypt. Next stage, wilderness. Next stage, Canaan. 
Canaan does not represent the millennium. It only represents the age of the overcomer, the dispensation of overcoming. Because in Canaan, they killed and burned and took cities. There will be no death in the millennium. But another thing that it does, it brings justification by faith after they believe in Moses, salvation and following under the pillar of fire and the atonement of the sacrificial lamb in the wilderness and then entering into the land that have been promised. Land that have been promised. Now, what is the land promised to the New Testament believer? Us now. The promise, here we go, is the Holy Spirit. It shall come to pass that in the last days, Joel 2.28, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy and upon my hand handmaids and my maidservants will I pour my spirit. They shall prophesy. I'll show wonders of heaven and so forth. All right. Did you notice Joshua? Here we go. Before they crossed Jordan, Joshua said, go to the midst of the camp Clean your clothes and sanctify every one of you. Let no man come at his wife, for within three days you will see the glory of God. See? And this is the part of emphasis you know. It is a process of getting ready to inherit the promise. So cleansing, sanctification, fasting, Praying, making things right, dropping oats, thinking right, making that effort to set your mind to his holiness is part of the process of getting ready to inherit the promise. This here is the legalistic part. This is the part where you stop smoking, stop drinking, stop running around, stop having your dress above your knee, you know, stop fooling with the boys, fooling with the girls, stop fooling around with life, stop fornicating, stop... Stop it. Stop movies, whatever. This is where you make that decision to clean up your act and clean up yourself. Now, the promise to Israel was God gave the promised land of Palestine. It was to be their possession. Let's continue. Yeah. Israel had sinned. They had transgressed my covenant, which I have commanded them. This is from Leviticus. Okay, Leviticus 11, 40, 40. No. Oh, no. No, no. this is Joshua 7, verse 11 to 14. Israel had sinned. This is God speaking. And they have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken the accursed thing that have also stolen and disassembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. Now, this is when they were fighting. All of a sudden, one battle is because they come running, so much men get killed and whatnot. And Joshua stopped the whole camp and said, wait a minute, God promises victory. God promises victory after victory. How come Israel turning their backs? How come we are being defeated? How come men are dying? I think something is wrong. Stop, stop, stop. We cannot continue like this. Something is wrong. And God began to tell them Israel sin. Israel have, 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 have stolen stuff and things among their own stuff. Verse 12 of Joshua 7 says, Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. Stop right there. So how could you expect God to trample, defeat, push back your enemies if you have stuff that belongs to the enemy? Oh, watch. Therefore, Israel could not stand before their enemies but turn their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy the accursed from among you. So God wasn't coming to touch anything they had. God said, my hand off for you, unless all you clean up your act, unless you get rid of whatever is wrong, whatever is an issue, whatever you have to get out of your life, you deal with it. Look at verse 13. And the Bible is written in such a classic way, in such a, a powerful way. No word is like out of line. There's no, like how we say, God is terse. T-R-S-E. He is, con he is con uh, uh, concise, precise, to the point. The first word in 13 is up. That one word on a comma, up. 
sanctify the people and say. You know, we we'll think about it now. Early in the morning, maybe the people have those have sleepy and they're waking up struggling and a voice said, up, get up, up. Sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel, thou canst not stand before thine enemies until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, he shall be brought according to your tribes. And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taken shall come according to the families thereof. And the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households. And the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. And we know the story. We will go to details of that. Achan was caught with a Babylonian uh, garment and different and Babylonian stuff. And the whole family was destroyed. And then Israel was back on track. So let's continue. Leviticus 11, verse 44 to 45. What was that? 44 of Leviticus 11. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. So this sanctification is not for Sunday morning only, or Wednesday night. Or when you think this has to become a way of life. I am the Lord your God, which ye, and ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves. Ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourselves with any man of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 45. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall be holy, for I am holy. First Chronicles chapter 15, verse 14. And the Bible says, and said unto them, and this is for the this is for the priests now, ministers. Ye shall be the chief of fathers of the Levites. Sanctify yourselves, both ye and your brethren, that you may bring the ark of the Lord God of Israel into the place that I prepared for it. For because you did it not at first, the Lord our God made a breach upon us, for that he sought him not after the due order. So there's an order in which God operates with. So the priests, Bible said in verse 14, and Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. Brother Brown, here you are. Okay. Something I was looking for is the order. He said, there you are. Don't fall short of that, brother. Without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're lost. You won't have to worry about getting to heaven. If there's nothing in here, in your heart, supernatural, the doors can't unlock. You would walk up there and bump your head against it. But if the Spirit of God is in there, the Spirit of God inside would unhinge the doors. You've got to have the thing in here to unlock it yonder. Now here he comes, talking about Jesus. He was torn to pieces. His soul went to God. God blessed him. And then his soul, here we go, returned back in the form of the baptism of the Holy Ghost that comes into every believer to sanctify, to clean up the mind, to clean up the heart and leave a portion of the Holy Ghost in there, here and there. And when the Holy Ghost is given out, that same Holy Spirit that brought the body of Jesus out of the grave, out of the grave, will rapture. And that covenant has to dovetail. He tore there and gave the body and went back to God. And the Spirit came back to the earth. Then your spirit will have to be the same kind of spirit or it will miss that place going together. Not because you make yourself but because something, the love of God, has swept over your soul and tore every earthly idol out. You believe in God's Son? God is in His Son? God is in His universe? God is in His Word? God is in His people? What the death of Christ was, was to sanctify a church that He might work through to continue His work. So He is nailing it down 
that the death of Christ was to bring a sanctified bunch of people, a people who holiness wouldn't be a phrase, but it will be a way of life. He says, and this is the beautiful part, he says he didn't have to die. He says, no man takes my life. I lay it down. And he was comparing that to Isaac. Because when Isaac asked Abraham, I see the wood, I see the fire, but where is the sacrifice? He said, God provides the sacrifice. And when Isaac was tied, Isaac didn't fight and carry on. He submitted himself to die. So Brother Brian says, Isaac was willing to submit himself to death. Jesus, he didn't have to die. He said, no man take my life. I lay it down. And he did that. That through that sacrifice that fulfills scripture, that bloody sacrifice. Now, this is the part that was so beautiful. He said, I think the sweetest scripture here in all the Bible is this scripture. Father, I sanctify myself because of them. He was a man. He could have had a wife. He was a man. He could have had a home, a place to lay his head. He had rights to that. He was a man. He could have had good clothes. He was a man. But what did he say? Father, I sanctify myself for their sake. What was he doing? He was training up 12 disciples that was going to preach the gospel in all the world. He put an example and brethren as ministers, I tell you, it pays us not to get too much of the world goods and things hanging around us. You preachers I'm talking to, sanctify yourself for them that you're going to lead. That is what we need today. It's a complete, consecrated, sanctified life of ministers that will walk upright before God, does not entangle with the things of the world, keep away from it. Father, I sanctify myself for their sake. Not because he had to do it, but he did it for their sake. Almost finished. So you take a vessel and you pick it up. It's full of mud. It is justified. A man has to pick it up. The next thing is got to be cleaned and scored out. And the word sanctify means clean and set aside for service. But set aside for service don't mean you are in service. Then Jesus said, blessed the day. Wow. When you hunger to, uh, for righteousness, for you shall be filled. So you see, here we go. The Holy Ghost come, came on the sanctified, real, true, sanctified believer. Underline that word. Not just I'm in the message. Are you a sanctified believer? What does sanctified mean? It's a compound word, Greek word, which means to be cleaned and set aside for service. The word sanctified in the English means make clean. In Hebrew, it means make holy. The Greek means sanctified. Clean and holy is the same thing. It is what sets aside for service. And about two more quotes and we are done. Now what? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for your house. Apply the token to your house. Now what? Then what do you do when you apply it to your house? And I don't just want you to think about it from a physical house standpoint. I want you to think about it from your body, from your temple, your house that he wants to live in. Move all the trash out. Get all the short skirts and the shorts and the cards and the cigarettes and televisions, whatever more, kick them out the door when you go to apply the token. So applying the token is not talk. It have a lot of people like to talk and talk and talk. We're not talking about talk. We're talking about action. Apply the token means move all the trash out, get all the short skirts, the shorts, the cards, the cigarettes. So tell me, you're a mother, you don't know what kind of clothes your daughter wearing? You don't see what's in her closet? You don't see what's licking in her? And she under your roof. Now watch. The cards, the cigarettes, televisions, and whatever more, 
kick them out of the house, the door, then you go to apply the token. It won't stand still for it. All the dances, parties, rock and roll, vulgar newspapers, and the stuff of the world, kick it out the door. Say, we are cleaning up this space around here. Two more and we are done. Water don't save a man. It takes the blood of Jesus Christ. There's no life in water. Life comes in the blood cell. Take sanctification to cleanse that life, to kill the desire of sin. Then the Holy Spirit comes into a clean vessel, set it aside in work service. The altar sanctified the vessel. But here we go. It's the filling is what put it in service. It was set aside for service. Now it's got to be put in service. And the Holy Ghost puts the church in service. And the final quote I have here, sanctification is when your name goes on the book as a believer. Your name is wrote in his blood. So therefore, sanctification or living a sanctified life is real evidence that you are in this message. It's an evidence that your name is on the book and you want to live for Christ and you want to make the sacrifices that God requires of you. If it means stopping this, cutting off this one, shaving this and whatever it is, if you know down in your heart, you're not doing all that you can do, you wouldn't have faith. You wouldn't have confidence to get access to healing, deliverance, spiritual, because your mechanics is not right inside of you. You know your heart is not right. But tonight, you have a tremendous opportunity to get your heart right. You're not getting your heart right because you're going to church. You're getting it right with God. Is God we're talking about. When the God came down on the mountain and the mountain began to quake and rock, the people said, don't let God speak. Let Moses speak. God said, okay. I want to come through a man, a prophet, who speak my voice. But that voice of God is still a thunder and lightning. And I'll close with this. Remember, friends, what we call mercy seat is where your judgment so thrown with blood in it. The blood give us the opportunity to access God's mercy. We were born in sin, shape, iniquity, on our way to hell, deserve to go to hell. But God rich in mercy, rich in mercy, is something that he's rich in. That is why he warns. That is why he calls. That is why he sent ministers and preachers and testimonies and gospel and every light to tell you, don't go that route. Don't go that way. But by stubbornness, by being enticed, by our own lust, by our own desires and decisions and choices, and we pay the price of our wrong decisions and choices. But tonight, I have a word from you. Sanctify yourself. And you will see what God do to you, through you, by you. For you. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you tonight. I believe is a word from you that you give me to share to your people. Sanctify yourselves. The Lord is part of your process of inheriting, Lord, this kingdom. You said, Sanctify them by thy truth, thy word is truth. It's not a phrase, Lord, it's a word that must be applied in order to walk this part of sanctification. It's an effort. It's a legal part. It's a requirement of yours. Who he found who he called. Who he called he justified. Who he justified he have already glorified. It said nothing about sanctification. Because sanctification is the part that we work out. Oh God, Hebrews tell, uh, Corinthians tell us, have then therefore these precious promises, let us cleanse ourselves. You are not going to come down with fork and hoe to clean up the land. The people came out of Egypt. They had no land. They came into a promised land. And they had to clean up. They had to cut down the trees and, and clean up this area and plant and eat up the corn and so on. Manna ceased. No more manna. Manna was required in the wilderness where by your mercy, manna from heaven fell. Every morning they're picking up fresh manna. But once they hit that land, they had to plant. They had to sow. They had to reap. They had to wait for rain, sun. They have to go into the laws of the land, the laws of your economy of the land. And that is where they had success. As long as they keep, keep away from accursed things, as long as they didn't hide stuff and nothing among their stuff, they would be successful in conquering the land. Help us, Lord, to see that the vision is just the same as it was to those believers and those people in the Old Testament under Joshua. It is the same, Lord. You have sent, you've sent a prophet, and now Joshua, the Holy Spirit, is here to guide us into the word, to tell us what to do. Father God, may some cross Jordan tonight and may baptize them right in their homes where the Holy Ghost on fire. May they bust through. May they break through. May they be encouraged, Lord. May their faith and soul be lifted up in your presence. 
that you could confirm their word to their hearts and lives. Grant it, Lord. And as they get on in prayer, may the spirit of prayer and supplication take a hold upon them. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen and amen. So as you get on in prayer, may you see it as real that God sent a word that you could be sanctified and stay sanctified and God going to bless you. So God be with you as we get on in prayer tonight.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father God, we praise you, Father. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. We worship you tonight, Lord. We honor you tonight. We thank you tonight. We thank you for every trial, every test. We thank you for our families, our lovers. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for calling us and predestinating us as this hour. Father Jesus, we pray that not the desire will be taken out of the world, but that it will be kept from evil. Father, may keep us from evil, Father. May forgive us our sins, our failures, our shortcomings. May quicken us unto righteousness, unto your holiness. And God, may we take that word in due season, Father, to sanctify ourselves, that we could walk in the light of your holiness, without which no man can see the Lord. Oh God, we worship you in the beauty of your holiness. Oh Jesus, come among us in a special way. Revive the church, revive the people. Still them up with a burden, a burden of the word, a burden of the promise of the hour, a burden, Lord, to see the children be marked with the Holy Ghost, sealed by the Holy Ghost, to see the people sealed with the Holy Ghost. You promise to loose that seal. You promise to send that seal. You promise to seal your people up, Father. The prophet stood and said, I see the bride called and sealed into the kingdom of God. Oh God, there will be a sealing for sure. The world sealed out and the Holy Ghost sealed in. Father, come and seal us tonight by your presence and your power. Put us in service by the token. Put us in service by dynamics and the mechanics. Put us in service by the love of God. Put us in service by the Holy Ghost itself. Oh Jesus, you promise to come among us and use the word in us. The secret you said is the word is in the bride. You put that word in the bride that we could have a word in due season. Oh Father, come on the scene tonight, Lord. Bless the elders, bless the deacons, bless the trustees, bless the laity, bless, oh God, the equipment personnel, the musicians, the song leaders, the, the music, or, or, or every part, Lord Jesus. May you minister to them and meet their every need. May we have a shout of the king in the camp on Sunday. May you pour out your presence, Lord. Break the band of wickedness, break the band of evil, rout the enemy, rout the power of darkness, Lord. May light break through, may revival break through, may healing break through, may deliverance break through. May you break limitations, Lord, limitations on our minds, limitations by our fears, limitations by our past, limitations by whatever is in us. Break it, Lord, that the church will see no limits, no limitations, just a, 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 a smooth sailing, Father, after rocking through and breaking the sound barrier. May we break the sound barrier tonight, the sound barrier in prayer, the sound barrier in faith. May we bust past it tonight, past sin, past unbelief, past our past, past our fears, past our weakness, past our failures, past our shortcomings, to go past all of it and just believe what you have said. Just like Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Father, may we leave here giving glory and praise to you, complaining weakness feet, complaining hinders feet. We complain too much. Oh God, we, we talk too much negative, Father. Change our talk, change our minds, change what we say, how we see it. Change, oh God, how we think, Lord. Renew our mind, transform our mind, the renewal of our mind by your word. Oh God, we want to be students of your word. We want to be students of the Bible. We want to understand what your will is. We want, we want to understand your nature, your being, all about you, how you live, Father. The people that came out of Egypt had none of a clue of who this God Moses was talking about. Oh God, and they had to be brought to this mountain to get instructions. While Moses went up, while getting instructions, while getting the commandments, they are carrying over a golden calf and all kind of a stuff, Lord. And Moses had come down and say, whose side you're on? And determined and people died and perished because they wouldn't, wasn't willing to wait to get to know and understand that God came down to bring that deliverance out of the hand of Egypt. Oh, Jesus, you have delivered us out of the hands of Egypt. Out of the hands of bondage. No, Lord. Yeah, it's, it, redemption is in two parts. Coming out of and going in. Lord, may we go in tonight. May we cross Jordan tonight. May we go in tonight with that sacrifice that you call us to sacrifice. That sacrifice of surrender. That sacrifice of sanctification. That sacrifice of waiting upon you. Granted, Lord, set the ministers in order. Set the church in order. Set our lives in order. Start with the leadership. Start with the elders. Start with the ministers. Start with your sons, your servants, Father. That they will step forward. And like Jesus, see, I sanctify myself for their sake. May we recognize a cost and a price to be paid to go forward. Lord, it, it, there's a price everywhere to, to go to the next level. And may it take us to the next level where you can be magnified and glorified. Granted, Lord, in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thanks again for being here. Just a tip for Sunday service. Don't study what time service started. Study what time you have to leave your house. 
you have to leave your house. You want to get there for 9.30 because you want to make sure you play a part to pray up the service. How do you not know that Sunday is going to be a revival for you, a deliverance for you, a breakthrough for you if you do your part? The prophet said, if we can only get started, God will do the rest. David had to wind up his sling. He had five stones. The only one will do, but he still had five. He had backups. And not only that, he got started. And then God was able to direct that stone. And if we could only get started, God could direct that stone. May God bless you tonight. Have a good evening. Thanks for being here. God be with you. God bless.